What is going on guys and girls? My name is James Alfixia. Welcome back today to Roblox. How are we doing everyone? Welcome back. Welcome back. Today it is time, of course, for some brand new Bee Swarm Simulator. And today we find ourselves back on this beautiful test realm because I've got some very, very cool things to show you. So, three, two, one, I'm the hive. How are we all doing? I hope we're good. I've got 15 bees. <laughs> it now means I can get to the werewolf, which is kind of nifty. Um, but yeah. Today's episode is going to be a mixture of basically just me plopping around in the background, seeing what I can find. However, you guys have been absolutely incredible with all of these amazing things you've been sending me over on Twitter and, and like Discord and stuff, all to do with the new update, all of the things that you're finding. And I have got some really, really cool things to show you, including a bunch of comments from Onnit himself giving us way more information about what we can expect from this next update. Sound good? I think so. So yeah, I'm gonna make my way over to the cactus field here and I'm just gonna do some quests and stuff in the background. Uh, one thing I've noticed, I can't quite remember if this was in like the previous version, but whenever there's a vicious bee on the map, <laughs> it makes so much noise now. It kind of, it's really weird. So the first time I heard the vicious bee, I thought it was like this brand new windy bee because it makes like this kind of noise in the background, but no, it's, it's just the vicious bee. Yeah, I thought it was the Windy Bee, but speaking of which, uh, I thought we would mention the Windy Bee, seeing as that it's been like three episodes now here on this test realm, and we haven't actually got to see it just yet. So that's kind of strange. Like, I'm not too sure why we haven't managed to see it. I have done plenty of hours here on this test realm, but it kind of seems like, at the moment anyway, the Windy Bee is kind of like a rare thing. Having said that though, there's some more information that you're gonna hear in the, like, a little bit later on in the video, which will explain the Windy Bee a little bit better. But just in case you haven't actually seen it just yet, um, I, I found this picture here on Twitter, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pop some, some tweets up and stuff. This is from <laughs> Kit Kat Cat in the Hat. <laughs> <laughs> which is an amazing name. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would show you roughly what the Windy Bee actually looks like. Um, so whilst I hide behind the Pumpkin of Justice here, you might not be able to see it. Um, yeah, this is kind of what the Windy Bee does. So it, it spawns in different fields. It's similar in terms of how it spawns, I think, to the, um, the Vicious Bee. However, this picture here shows that the Windy Bee does spawn inside the Rose Field. And the second picture I have here also shows that it spawns inside the dandelion. So you may kind of notice there's this like crazy like tornado effect style thing. I would love to actually see the Windy Bee in action, which is something that I was kind of hoping may happen this episode. I'm not too sure, uh, but it does have its own like custom uh, kind of like, you know, battle things. You've got like the big tornadoes. I would imagine that your bees probably get like sucked into the tornado and stuff. Uh, and they do look really, really cool. So we're gonna mention the, uh, the Windy Bee again a little bit later on, however, because we're doing these screenshots uh, just quickly here, this is another one. <laughs> People's usernames are amazing today. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> this is from dollar, 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 dollar. That's a lot of dollars. <laughs> and yeah, I just thought this was really cool. So once again in the rage field, uh, the rage field, once again in the rose field, uh, this dude has actually found a rage aphid. How cool is that? I had no idea that thing even existed. So yeah, not only do we have the regular aphid and we also have the diamond aphid, but there is also aphids which have a kind of like bee um, style, I guess. So obviously this aphid is based off the rage bee and it kind of has a similar coloration. I don't know what the difference is between all of the different aphids, but I didn't know this existed until I saw this screenshot, so thank you so much. That's really, really cool to know. So we're definitely going to have multiple types of aphids spawning in the fields. And uh, yeah, I actually really, really like that. I would love there to be more different versions of these aphids. Um, so, you know, gold, diamond, regular, a rage one, I don't know, like a Riley one, a bucko one, a music one. How cool would that be? Oh yeah, also, just before we get into the screenshots of Onnit speaking about the update, we did actually see, I think, in this last episode here, uh, there was one of those memory board games up inside the 35 area field. So the cool thing is as well, I, I must have completely missed this, because I think this was available the last time that we played. However, if we actually go uh, up into the 10B zone, uh, and we go simply like this, look at that! This is basically one of those boards which is up there. You can actually see it if you've got eagle eyes. I can just see it above that uh, coconut tree there. And this is our memory match. 
Okay, that's what the second M is. <laughs> so yeah, it's 25,000 to play. You can do it once every two hours. And I think what we established when we tried it with the uh, machine in the first episode, the um, the Royal Jelly to Ticket Machine, uh, the better the badges you've got, the more chances you actually get to complete the game, basically. Um, so yeah, these ones are kind of cool. I feel like it's just like a really nice way to get yourself some extra items. And basically that is how it works. Anything that you actually match, you then receive uh, as a reward. However, we just spent 25,000 honey to get a jelly bean, which I guess is not horrendous. But the more badges you've got, I feel, and like the higher level the badges, the more chances you'll actually get to match. So in theory, if you remember them correctly, you might actually be able to get every single reward on that board. And then after like two hours, you'll be able to do it again. So I really like those. I think that's super duper clever. And I feel like it's definitely going on with the theory that on it is definitely trying to make just general items and stuff much easier to get, which is good news. Why have the pineapples gone silver? <laughs> you guys see that? Wait, why is every... Uh... I feel like the texture's gone funny. You guys see that, right? Silver pineapples. Why is that a thing? I have no idea. Huh. Okay, so yeah, all of the Onnit messages that you guys are going to see in just a second, they were all taken by a dude called Foxhunter350 on Twitter. So thank you so much, my dude, for taking the time to like just screenshotting every single thing that Onnit said and sending them over to me. That's really, really cool. And it means that I can share it with all of you guys as well, because there's such like interesting information in here. Um, so yeah, just again, thank you to everyone who's like, you know, taken screenshots and stuff and sent them to me. Super duper kind. It means that I can make these videos for you guys um so yeah really really appreciate that thank you so much um and yeah basically fox hunter he took all of these pictures and there are so many things that we can discuss inside these discord messages um so we're gonna begin kind of relatively in order but i might jump around a little bit um so do you remember i mentioned the windy bee a little bit earlier on um so yeah basically the way that the windy bee works is on it says, the Windy Bee is RNG at first, but your odds continue to go up as you donate stuff, and after a certain point, you are almost 100% likely to get it. Um, so this kind of like leads me to think, is there some kind of Windy Bee shrine? I feel like that was mentioned sometime. I can't quite remember. Maybe it was one in these other messages. Uh, but it kind of feels like your chances of actually encountering that Windy Bee, and maybe that's why we haven't encountered one just yet, is because there is like a small percentage chance that we'll just spawn randomly. However, I feel like there's definitely going to be things that you can do, things that you can donate, perhaps, uh, that will allow you to increase your chances of having that Windy Bee spawn. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no wonder uh, I was talking about the shrine, because it's literally in the next message. Uh, it says here... Um, oh, I think he may be talking about the shrine. So he says the shrine isn't actually working in this test area just yet. Uh, but this is something you'll find when we get through a few more messages, is that the stuff in the test realm is just a small percentage of some of the new features, which I think is really cool. Uh, but on it then does say that donating stuff to the a wind shrine can do a variety of things like boost fields or improve your odds of obtaining Windy B. Um, so yeah, he's also saying that as well as donating items, uh, to this wind shrine, it's also going to be like a secondary or like, you know, like a third way even of boosting your uh, fields, which is kind of cool. This seems like a really interesting bee, actually. I like it. These ones are like relatively cryptic here. He says that the 35B zone, which is the new one up at the top there, uh, this gives you stuff, crafting stuff. Now, I'm not 100% sure what he's actually talking about, but I feel like maybe he's talking about the memory match game. Um, so he says the 35B zone gives crafting stuff, star jellies, micro converters, and other things. It's different each time you play. But then he also goes on to say the one in the 30B zone gives more moon charms, glitter, and stingers. So does this mean that there's going to be... Oh, look, there's another memory match inside the sprinkler shop. I call it the sprinkler shop. I know it's probably not called that, like, properly. I call this <laughs> the sprinkler shop in the ace place. <laughs> I don't know why. Um... Oh, look at that, inside. So I can't get in here just yet because obviously this is like a badge specific thing, but 
plenty of these memory match games and I guess maybe what he's saying is like these memory match boards are going to be different depending on what zone you find them in. So carrying on here with our little um, sort of mission into basically some information. Uh, just a few random messages. I might as well show you all of these because I feel like it might be kind of interesting to people. Um, so he says uh, that I'm making the badges ridiculous in the new areas just to give people insane long-term things to do if they want. Um, so yeah, there are actually some new badges. And you can see these like literally in the place here. You've got the coconut badge, you've got the pepper badge. Uh, and I think there might also be like a couple of other badges. So I feel like... I feel like I read somewhere that there's going to be like a one trillion honey badge or something, um, which is obviously like a super duper high number. I know there is people people that have already got like a trillion, but a trillion is still like an awful lot of honey to like any player. Um, so I feel like there's going to be... Um, why would you bounce me up there? That's so annoying. Um, yeah, I feel like that's going to be kind of like a longevity thing. So the only thing that I hope with that is that generally I hope the reward for getting those ridiculous numbers isn't like too OP I guess because I kind of feel like even if that is a thing there will be people that will be able to get them but I feel like the vast majority of people won't be able to get them so I feel like yeah definitely there should be some kind of reward but hopefully it's not like too OP if you know what I mean so yeah it's kind of like a balanced thing if it's a good reward then great but hopefully it's not essential if that makes sense. Uh, he also says, we did talk about the Robo Bear super ages ago, and he says, the Robo Pass, Robo Bear, and all things related to that aren't in this update. I've worked a lot on it, and we'll come back to it in the future. So we did see a long time ago, basically some decals for a Robo Bear, uh, which looked really, really cool. I guess it was kind of like an NPC, or perhaps a new zone, or like, a, maybe it was a mini game, actually. I feel like it might have been some kind of mini game. Um, but yeah, that's not coming in this next update, but it is something that he's done work on. So as a future update, looks pretty cool. So moving on to a few more general things here. He says there's almost 100% likely, unfortunately, to not have a Halloween update because on it hasn't actually finished this update just yet, um, which is a little bit of a shame. Like one of the things that I like about Beast Wars the most is, you know, the festive events. So obviously the uh christmas event was really really cool and then we had the easter event which was part of the egg hunt um but yeah i'm not too sure if i remember them like on it ever doing a halloween event i'm not too sure what it is like even to be honest like even just like a little bit of a map reskin and maybe just like some reward like a really simple quest reward line would be really really cool i don't think it has to be something crazy but you know it's always nice to play the seasonal things so i don't know make the hives orange or something you know just make them look like pumpkins or maybe just <laughs> you know what i mean just just make it like slightly uh slightly halloweeny but yeah who knows? We'll see what happens. Anyway, he also says, the new items are not really that insanely expensive compared to some of the existing stuff. 50 billion honey saved will be more than enough to get all of the stuff. Now, I read this and I was like, oh, thank goodness. Because <laughs> I was really worried that there was going to be like a 200 billion, 300 billion, 400 billion item. And that would take a long, long time to get. So the good news is for me personally is that we're going to be able to explore all of the new items as soon as they come out. Because we do have over 50 billion saved, which is really, really good news. Um, and yeah, also, he also goes on to say, the main thing in this update will be the two quest lines with new NPCs, which I'm not putting in the test realm at all to keep them a surprise. So this goes back to the point we made, whereby there is definitely lots of new content and different content that we haven't actually even seen yet. And yeah, there's going to be two great big quest lines, along with all of this stuff in the test realm, which is going to keep us busy. So that's good news. Ah, okay, interestingly, I probably should have used this screenshot at the beginning because we were talking about the Windy Bee there, but just like a little bit of information about him is obviously uh, this is a bee that you are going to be able to use yourself when you've, you know, done all the necessary steps. So a little bit like the Vicious Bee, you know, you had to kind of put some work into it to be able to get it in your hive. You are going to be able to do the same with the Windy Bee. Uh, so basically he says its gifted bonus at the moment uh, is a 15% instant white conversion and double the boost from clouds. Um, so instead of plus 25% pollen, clouds give you plus 50% pollen when you're under them, which lasts for a little while when you leave it. So it seems like the Windy Bee is going to generate kind of like power spots, I guess, on the field, which are going to help you with your collection speed for like white pollen. Um, he also says it has some utility like helping you collect lots of tokens, 
like when you pop a sprout, and clearing lots of small mobs. So this means the Windy Bee is also going to be useful when you are doing sprouts, uh, and I also feel it's going to be super useful when you're doing stick bug, because stick bug drops a lot of items as well from like the little stick nymphs, and the little stick nymphs kind of get in the way a lot. So if Windy Bee could help with that, then that would be kind of cool. And then he also says, I'm not too sure of the power level of Windy Bee. It has weird effects that are difficult to measure against the other bees. Its tornado ability collects by far the most pollen, but has a downside. Its other abilities are unique too. I don't really know what to think about that, but this Windy Bee sounds incredible. Dude! He also says, this message is slightly cut off here, but it says, the higher level you get Windy Bee when you defeat it, the higher chances you have of getting Wind Vials. So I kind of feel like the Wind Vials is like the currency that you need to really get from that. And you can actually see one of them just chilling out right on the top of this thing, which I can't get to, <laughs> which is super annoying. Uh, but yeah, about like those Wind Vials, he says that there's not a fixed number of Wind Vials that give you the Windy Bee, but the more you donate, the higher your odds of getting it. Okay, so is it like a donation chance style thing? That's interesting. Uh, it isn't balanced or working yet, so you won't be able to obtain Windy Bee in the test realm. So, you know, you haven't seen anyone running around with an actual Windy Bee in their hive. Uh, a little bit about the stingers, because we've talked about that a little bit. He says he's making the stingers much easier um, to get through the daily bonus, and he's also increasing the Vicious Bee spawn rates, uh, having the gifted Vicious Bee chance, uh, I have seen a few of those in the server as well, and adding stingers as a drop through memory match, and also making a stinger dispenser to buy one stinger for 10 tickets. It's incredibly expensive to buy it all with tickets, but if you just need a couple, then it's an option. So yeah, definitely, I think, it, making it a little bit easier to get the Vicious Bee. I feel like the Vicious Bee is so useful, especially when you're doing, like, stick bug and just everything really um so yeah that's good news more vicious bees okay and now just a few more here to finish off this video um oh okay we're falling down this hole but all good um so yeah what we have here is basically just a little bit of general information about a few new items and also a really cool thing actually i, I kind of like the sounds of this uh but yeah he on it then says i've been considering adding some new boots below the gummy probably uh and related to coconuts but i haven't done it yet uh, if I have time, I'll add them. So it seems like there's going to be, like, a better pair of boots. Maybe not quite as good as the gummy boots. Um, but, yeah, there will be, like, a new pair of gummy boots coming. He also then, this is kind of interesting. He says, uh, let me find the correct one. Uh, yeah. So apparently he's been talking about these tropical drinks or something, which is really weird. <laughs> so it says, the sprouts were bugged to give tropical drinks... Uh, if uh, it was only supposed to come from sprouts on the coconut field. So it seems like if you find a sprout inside the coconut field, it's programmed to actually give you a tropical drink. And it seems like you can also craft these tropical drinks. And it says uh, you'll need the tropical drinks. Uh, and the tropical drinks require coconuts, enzymes, and oil to craft, or they drop from the coconut crab. They won't be easy to get. Um, so I guess like this tropical drink is gonna do something. It might be uh, an item which you need towards crafting. It might have its own special ability. Not too sure about that just yet. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be another new crafting resource. I imagine that's gonna be added to the blender and you're gonna be able to make them uh, using the new resources. Uh, and then he also says, I'm not too sure of the coconut backpack's end price yet, but currently that bad boy is 25 billion. So that kind of means that if he said that all of the items are in around 50 billion, it seems like the uh, coconut backpack is going to be, you know, pretty much like the most expensive item, I guess, if, if we do sort of quick maths, or at least it's going to be the equal most expensive item. Uh, but based off the fact that he said that it's going to be 50 billion, I feel like at this update, the coconut backpack, which we've seen pictures of before, it looks really cool. I feel like that's going to be the most expensive item in the game. Uh, apart from the gummy boots, obviously, which are just madness. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there we go. I feel like that's probably all of the screenshots that I've got. I don't think I missed out anything super duper important. Uh, and as you can see, this is just extra really awesome information uh, for us to, to look forward to. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Yeah, so if you did, please remember to poke me in that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed, go for it, because we do Roblox done fun. But until next time, thank you once again for watching. It's been such a pleasure. As always, thanks. Ranting up!